good afternoon, good after lunch. Uh, obfuscation and beyond uh, uh, securing your binary. Uh, the, the screen is slightly cut on the edges, but I believe that uh, it will be okay. Uh, I'm Alex. Uh, uh, I first uh, entered uh, C++'s mother tongue in my CV uh, 30 years ago. For the last 12 years, I've been working on uh, um, mobile applications, uh, all kinds of uh, uh, smartphones, iOS and Android. Uh, currently, I work at a security, cloud security company, Reblaze. Uh, we recently, uh, in the last couple of days, we received another, another InfoSec award, uh, and, uh, and we are hiring. So please talk to me if you are interested in web security. Uh, in the spare time, I'm a mentor at Android Academy. Uh, Android Academy is a, a nice uh, volunteer uh, organization in uh, Tel Aviv that uh, reaches out to young uh, developers and uh, developers who are not exposed to uh, uh, smartphone uh, market and uh, tries to uh, help them uh, enter this interesting uh, professional market. Uh, so this talk, oh, uh, this talk will uh, be biased towards uh, this audience. We will. Uh, I'm interested in smartphones. I'm interested in Android, and uh, we will. We shall talk about uh, Android and uh, C++. And uh, uh, we will talk about obfuscation, why we need obfuscation, why C++ helps uh, the developers to or, or, uh, obfuscate their code, uh, how, uh, what are the best practices to hide uh, the secrets, uh, the Java secrets in C++. And uh, we shall uh, dive deeper into C++ uh, world, how uh, secrets are uh, preserved in C++, how you do it, how you uh, protect your C++ code from uh, attackers. And finally, uh, I shall also mention uh, a few uh, solutions that can help uh, the developers uh, to get it uh, uh, if they are ready to pay. Uh, so, uh, let's start with uh, the question why uh, obfuscation is, is uh, needed, why protection is needed, and let me remind you the beautiful talk about reverse engineering uh, that was given by uh, Zaban uh, at the previous uh, Core C++ conference. She showed us how easily uh, a uh, computer game can be uh, uh, tricked uh, and how uh, she could re receive uh, very high uh, scores at the game. Uh, and while it is very nice uh, for the hacker, it's not what a game developer is uh, maybe happy about. And uh, Things that are uh, must be uh, secured and uh, kept uh, uh, preserved, uh, protected, are API keys that may uh, be embedded into your application. These are certificates. This is data that you, your application extracts from secure sources like uh, keychains. Uh, and these are uh, the signing procedures uh, that you may is uh, to ensure that uh, your communication with the server is uh, uh, real, that uh, nobody intervened in this process, nobody hacked your uh, application. Uh, well, first of all, uh, I want to say uh, that uh, these uh, tasks are very common and uh, please don't uh, imagine that you can uh, reinvent the wheel, that you can decide, uh, that you can write uh, the code 
yourself in such a way that uh, and, uh, the hackers will not be able to reconstruct what you do. Uh, most likely, if you do it yourself, you will end with code that will be both uh, uh, less secure, uh, uh, will uh, expose yourself to more attacks, to uh, more dangerous uh, bugs, and will not bring you security. You, uh, the first uh, task uh, uh, that we have as, development, as developers is to keep our code maintainable, to have uh, better uh, 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 code that we are sure that works, that we can uh, update, we, uh, that we can uh, continue to work on and uh, obfuscating our code by hand may only uh, bring us to code that we will not be able to maintain. Another uh, small notice is that obfuscation is not always uh, uh, possible. Like uh, Apple uh, may reject your application if it is too highly obfuscated because uh, they want uh, uh, some kind uh, of transparency of what your code is doing. So uh, you should only obfuscate parts of your application that are really, uh, really important. Uh, and uh, that's what I talked about before. So uh, if you talk to an Android developer about obfuscation, the first uh, reaction would be, well, but we have ProGuard. It's free and it gives me obfuscation, and it's uh, bundled into Android Studio. Well, first of all, please do use ProGuard. ProGuard is a wonderful tool. It is a free shrinker, optimizer, and pre-verifier for Java bytecode. So uh, if you use uh, ProGuard, it will uh, help you uh, uh, find uh, subtle bugs in your code. It will uh, make your application much smaller. It will uh, make your application run faster. But in terms of obfuscation, ProGuard is not uh, on the professional grade. It's, uh, it only replaces uh, names of uh, functions and variables with some uh, 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 random strings, uh, any professional hacker, hacker knows how easily this can be reversed. Uh, and most importantly, all your strings are still uh, completely visible, even for the most uh, uh, unexperienced uh, uh, attacker. Uh, there are all kinds of discussions uh, you can find how the credentials can be securely uh, hidden and stored uh, on Android. Uh, well, the same applies to iOS, naturally. Uh, but uh, one of the common practices is to uh, uh, shift uh, all this to C++. Uh, why C++? One of the reasons is that if you want to uh, deal with these secrets in your code, and your code is written, some, uh, some of it in Java, some of it in Kotlin, some of it in Objective-C, some of it in Swift, each of these needs very special approach and uh, um, code modifications and tools, and you simply cannot um, sustain uh, all these different tools and uh, changes and uh, uh, things that you have to do. Uh, better do it in one place, and C++ is a good uh, uh, place to do it. Uh, one uh, uh, thing that uh, many uh, uh, developers believe is that Swift compiler uh, may be uh, obfuscating. It is really not. Uh, a lot of symbols and metadata are exposed by Swift compiler and uh, 
reverse engineering tools easily uh, help uh, the uh, uh, attacker to find the right places to disassemble and uh, uh, attack your code and uh, 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 steal your precious secrets. Uh, is a Flutter compiler uh, actually obfuscating? No, it isn't. Uh, you, the hacker only needs to find the correct version of Flutter runtime, recompile it with his instrumentation and hooks, and uh, he has full access to all your logic and all your secrets and everything. So, uh, my uh, suggestion is let's switch to C++ and join uh, the beautiful modern programming language and profit. Uh, speaking about uh, uh, moving uh, uh, from Java to C++ and the Plosal clients to Kotlin, uh, first of all, the good news, uh, the latest version of Apprint Studio have very good support for JNI, Java Native Interface, uh, that help you uh, actually uh, uh, write your code, uh, reduce a lot of boilerplate. Uh, still, uh, do not try to rewrite all your Java logic in C++, it may be very unpleasant. Like uh, an example here is a short uh, uh, Java function uh, uh, method that uh, extracts a signature hash from uh, the application. And here you can see, well, not complete uh, rewrite of the same uh, Java method in uh, C++. Uh, needless to say that uh, when you write it in C++, you have uh, much less uh, compiler support, uh, uh, type security, uh, type safety, and all kinds of things. So uh, be uh, uh, aware of that and only uh, port to C++ things that are really important to hide. Uh, another... Uh, uh, thing that uh, to remember is that uh, not everything can be uh, transferred from Java to C++. You cannot express uh, Java callbacks uh, in C++. You need at least to leave some Java uh, uh, trampolines uh, to your C++ code. And uh, now when you write uh, for Android in C++, you have the advantage that all Android system so, uh, c source code is open source. You can read it, you can reuse parts of it. Uh, here is an example of a native camera application that I wrote by heavily reusing the system code of uh, Android system. But uh, this is also not a very easy and re recently uh, many parts of Android system are sealed by Google. Uh, they are uh, blacklisted or graylisted. Be careful about it. Still, some things are uh, possible in C++, like uh, getting the UI thread, which is not really documented, but it's still possible. And uh, another, uh, another note that uh, for moving from Java to C++ is that uh, when we write in C++, we may uh, uh, be tempted to use the same Java system APIs that we use in a regular application. This is not always what you want to do, especially when you are writing uh, code uh, for uh, pro uh, protected parts of your application uh, because uh, these system uh, APIs can be easily hooked uh, by the attacker or modified and uh, traced. And so it is highly recommended uh, to go beyond uh, these uh, APIs uh, like uh, the 
linked here example of checking API, APK signature that was uh, people, people found that uh, you can only write it in native C++ to be really uh, safe. Uh, your application is a collection of zip files that you can uh, manipulate, re well, read only, you can read it and uh, uh, do everything with it what you need without uh, going to the system uh, Java APIs. Uh, uh, now, when we are talking about your C++ code uh, uh, that is devoted to most uh, precious parts of your application, uh, please uh, be extremely careful. Use all possible defensive uh, coding techniques. Uh, harden your code, uh, test it thoroughly, uh, test the most unlikely edge cases, uh, some uh, very unlikely uh, input uh, is probably not what you will uh, see in real life, but uh, the attacker will definitely uh, try to invent most unexpected inputs uh, trying to attack uh, and uh, debug and reverse engineer your code. So uh, your code should be uh, carefully uh, tested. Uh, uh, make sure to t uh, check the compiler warnings, add all kinds of hardening flags to your compiler. Uh, definitely use ASLR, uh, protect your uh, GLT and uh, uh, very important, uh, make sure to hide all your internal symbols. Only expose the symbols that are uh, necessary uh, uh, for communication with Java. And when your uh, code is clean and uh, tested and does exactly what you want, uh, it's time to apply techniques of white box cryptography, which essentially take uh, this simple code flow and make it very hard to understand and uh, uh, revert and uh, uh, make a hacker's life much, much harder. Hopefully, they will decide that your application is not worth the effort and move uh, to hack some other application. Uh, uh, well, uh, in order to uh, obfuscate your application, uh, your, your Java code, we can use uh, the compiler. Uh, the C++ compiler for Android and also for iOS is based on LLVM. And this means that we can add uh, extra transformation passes. Uh, usually they are used uh, to uh, uh, add optimizations to your code, but the same logic, oh, the same uh, approach can be used also to hide your secrets and make uh, reverse engineering harder. Uh, the, there are uh, many uh, open source uh, extensions uh, for uh, uh, C++ uh, uh, compiler for, for LLVM C++ compiler. I use Dclang. Uh, it's a very nice uh, open source project. Uh, a little uh, comment, like uh, when you work with these uh, uh, compilers, uh, you probably, you, you can either use opt command uh, uh, that uh, operates on your bytecode, or you can rebuild the whole uh, tool chain, uh, which it makes life easier. You uh, may add uh, annotations into your embed annotations into your code, like uh, what functions uh, should be obfuscated, what strings should be 
uh, transformed and things like that. Or uh, you, uh, sometimes you can use external configuration files, which in my eyes is easier and better because the, w using an uh, external configuration file, you are not locked into a specific uh, tool chain. You can switch uh, to another uh, compiler uh, by simply replacing the configuration files. Uh, the source code remains clean and uh, uniform. Uh, now, uh, let me show you uh, just a few uh, possible obfuscation uh, passes that are available for LLVM. For example, Bogus uh, Control Flow, which uh, uh, works more or less like this. Uh, you take the uh, C++ uh, function. Uh, this is w uh, the byte code that is produced with the uh, normal compiler. This is the byte code that is produced uh, after transformation, which makes uh, uh, reverse engineering much, much harder. Uh, there are uh, uh, other techniques include uh, uh, replacing branch uh, instructions with uh, as if conditional branches, uh, splitting basic blocks, uh, flattening, which is a originally was an uh, optimization technique, but uh, uh, today it is also used for uh, obfuscation. This is an example of flattening, okay? This is the same, the same code that passed through flattening uh, transformation. Uh, believe me, uh, people will uh, give up and uh, uh, let your application, uh, uh, leave your application alone. And uh, there are other, uh, uh, Possibilities are to switch, uh, replace integers with floats, to uh, run arithmetic on the vector uh, operations uh, because they're harder to understand from disassembly. And most importantly, uh, string obfuscation. Like, uh, uh, the uh, transformation will both uh, encode your all your strings constants and insert a decrypt function that will be automatically called when the string constant is needed for uh, a specific operation. Uh, but, okay, this is not uh, the only thing that we can do. Uh, the, we also uh, need some active protection techniques. Uh, runtime application self-protection RASP. Uh, when uh, your compiled code uh, uh, can, at real, at runtime, identify the attempt of uh, attacker to hook some of your functions, to modify some of your code, and uh, can uh, find uh, ways to protect itself, to send uh, an alarm message uh, or uh, to crash the code, whatever you choose. Uh, uh, the, these uh, techniques uh, include the detection of a compromised environment like uh, routing. They can uh, uh, look for uh, debuggers and uh, hooks like Frida uh, inserted. Uh, they can detect uh, code ch changes by verifying signatures and uh, checksums. And uh, uh, one uh, important thing is to uh, let them run very early in the lifetime of your application run. Uh, you must load them on application load, you can use uh, the global variable initialization to run before uh, the main, before uh, 
before the application really starts. It makes uh, uh, the uh, uh, attacks much, much harder. Uh, so uh, if you uh, are not a, a compiler freak like me and you don't uh, want to uh, learn all these uh, transformations and uh, recompile uh, the compiler uh, on your local machine. Uh, you can use uh, commercial solutions uh, uh, which are uh, very powerful these days. Uh, uh, here are uh, listed uh, just a few. Some of them are uh, is the case that you download to your machine and uh, incorporate in your uh, build process. Others are uh, cloud services where you uh, provide your binary uploaded to cloud and uh, the logic runs there and you receive an obfuscated application uh, from the provider. Uh, one note, uh, these services are quite expensive uh, so uh, they are not uh, for everybody. Yes. Uh, not exactly. No, no, no. Uh, uh, they are not only for Android. They are uh, the all these uh, are uh, uh, both for Android and iOS. And. Uh, 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 even more than that, like uh, UpShield uh, can uh, uh, protect your Linux applications and uh, uh, others. I'm not sure about, uh, about, about other. Well, Dex Protector is definitely an Android-specific uh, tool, but others, uh, all other uh, suppliers uh, know that you have Android and iOS applications and they try to answer your uh, request. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, questions? Uh, a very, very, very good question. Uh, the question was how we can protect our deep learning uh, uh, techniques, uh, pro, uh, uh, our deep, deep learning models and things like that. Well, uh, the, uh, you're right. Uh, when you go to, when, when you work with uh, TensorFlow, what I did, well, I only have experience with TensorFlow. When you work with TensorFlow, it now gives you an option to simply upload your uh, model uh, uh, to uh, TFLight and embed it into the application. Uh, no hassle, easy, works beautifully, but it is fully uh, uh, transparent. Everybody can steal your uh, model, understand what you did, get everything. Uh, so you need to go harder way, you cannot use the built-in techniques, you must uh, somehow encode your model, decode it exactly when you want to uh, push it uh, into your uh, GPU or whatever, uh, uh, discard the decoded uh, uh, m memory as soon as possible uh, and also use all the protection techniques that I uh, talked before uh, that will help you identify attempts to uh, uh, statically or dynamically to hook into your application attack or try to deconstruct, try to extract this thing. Uh, this is uh, th th this is how it works exactly. Uh, this is uh, this is another example of uh, sensitive code that you don't you, that you want to protect. The questions.
Yes. Uh, yes. And I, I wonder about it in regards of the real time performance because uh, our experience usually leads to very uh, very, very, uh, very correct. Uh, obfuscation, uh, well, uh, some obfuscation techniques uh, really degrade performance. So you must uh, measure performance you must apply these uh, obfuscations only to portions of your application where uh, protection is necessary and performance is less important. Uh, when you have some very uh, specific uh, parts that need uh, super high performance, like uh, video rendering, don't use uh, obfuscation techniques inside, uh, leave them outside. Uh, I'm not sure that it was uh, very clear from, the, from my explanation. Uh, like all these uh, things are injected automatically into your code, including uh, protection from uh, uh, routing, protection from hooking, and things like that. These are not things that you write in your application. You only say, okay, I want 1% of my, oh, sorry, uh, okay, uh, I want, uh, I want, I want uh, what, only 1% of my uh, uh, in, uh, functions uh, have this uh, protection, uh, that may be enough, uh, but Definitely uh, performance and also size of the code uh, are important factors when you consider how exactly you obfuscate it. Thank you very much.